He doesn't care about you. He doesn't want you to be free. He wants you to conform to his ideals of society. He's acting like a f***ing commie. And it's pathetic how all of you sheep just buy along with anti-freedom commie bullshit when it agrees with your ideals. He wants to ban what people can see with their eyes. You know, like how we ban videos of people getting murdered and how we ban indecent exposure. He's more of a fascist than Hitler. And he spelled it wrong, so it's, he's more of a fascist than Hitler, like Hitler succeeds it. Get the f out of America, you anti-freedom commie. That's right, you're a fascist and a communist. Never mind that one of the core principles of fascism is its opposition to communism. You're actually both of them at the same time because that's how terrible you are. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. Casual Friday. See how casual this is? Is it a merchandise plug? Yes, but it's done casually, so it's okay. Uh, this video is going to act as sort of a follow-up to the last video that we did about why you should stop watching porn. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go watch it. It covers all the reasons you should stop watching porn, why it's not good for you, the effects of it, the effects of it on a societal scale, etc. So there will be a link to that in the description. Uh, what we're going to do here is sort of elaborate on what I meant by banning pornography. Admittedly, Got a little carried away, I was being a bit hyperbolic, so we'll clarify that. Um, also, I think that the schedule is going to go something like this video, yes, a couple more days, another video, yes. Then I'm embarking on the epic fall Midwest tour during which I'll be speaking at a couple schools, one in Wisconsin, one in Ohio. So go check that out. The events are open to everyone and there's more information in the description. But I want to start out by saying that I'm actually really happy with the response that I got to the last video because this is something that I obviously feel very strongly about and I had been planning on doing this video actually since I had started the channel and I knew that I was going to get a lot of backlash for it because very simply put, a lot of people really like porn and a lot of people get defensive over their use of porn because deep down they know it's not good and they know that they're addicted to it. And so that's why the reaction is ever, hmm, I disagree with him wanting people to stop watching porn. It's always a very emotional, vicious response. And I expected that, but what I didn't expect and what I was very happy to see was the overwhelming amount of not only positive feedback, but messages, emails, DMs, all from people saying stuff like, hey man, you know, I've been struggling with this for a long time, so thanks so much for making a video about it. Hey man, that video's giving me the motivation to finally stop watching porn, just stuff like that. And, you know, some people sent me some more detail about their experience with porn than I would have liked, but again, you know, glad that I could help. <laughs> um, and I think that this is actually a unique relationship, and this isn't my belief, it's more of an observation, but I've noticed that the people who watch my videos, they can relate to some of what we talk about because, you know, obviously I'm a conservative. We cover all the normal conservative ground. But the reason that I started making videos in the first place isn't because I really thought that, oh, everyone needs to hear my take on the minimum wage. Or I thought that everyone just had to hear for the umpteenth time why lower taxes means more economic growth. That's all important. It's important to know that information, but what I noticed a few years ago, which compelled me to want to start doing this, is that the issues which I regard to be the most important issues, issues pertaining to the social fabric of the country, the family structure, the state of men in this country, these are things that weren't getting covered, and these are things that matter very deeply to me, not only because I would like to have a family someday, and I would like my children to be afforded the same upbringing that I was afforded, but because I want the same thing for your family or for your future family, because families are the backbone of societies, and if the family is disintegrated, and frankly, I don't see a point in living in society anymore. Like what greater purpose could there possibly be? Moreover, I think that having strong, independent, capable men is a prerequisite to having a strong family structure. And so that's why I've tried to talk about issues facing men that mainstream people seem to ignore. Issues like our role in society being undermined, our suicide and drug rates, you know, most recently our widespread addiction to pornography. Because as I stated in the video... Pornography is making men less motivated, it is making us depressed, it is desensitizing us, and because of that I have a serious problem with it and I'm glad to find out that I'm not the only one. But that's why I was so disgusted to see these idiots like, John Doyle doesn't care about you, he wants you to conform to his vision of society, blah blah. It's like, that's a pretty special thing to say, because you could literally just like, hey son, don't jump off the roof into the kiddie pool. Dad, you don't care about me, you just want me to conform to your vision of society, yeah, I'm edgy. 
I don't like society. I don't like rules. I got to get out of this town. It's like, okay, buddy. Seriously, everyone who knows me knows that that's not where I'm coming from. I really just want to help people. And I've never stated this publicly, but you know, I figured I would now just in case anyone needs it. But some of you know that I keep a regular correspondence with like a hundred of you. And I try to answer as many messages as I can, many emails as I can. I usually set time aside. And if I don't answer, it's not because I'm ignoring you. I just didn't see it. Sometimes they like automatically delete. But because of the videos we've done talking about these issues affecting families and affecting men, particularly young men, I've gotten a lot of outreach from guys asking for advice, uh, simply just needing to talk to somebody. And this is what I meant when I said it's a unique relationship because I think it's hard sometimes for people to ask a family member or a friend for help because there's this tendency to want to avoid making yourself vulnerable to these people because you don't want them to think differently of you or something related to that. But what I've noticed is that because people watch my videos, they know that you know I'm generally I know what they're going through because we talk about it um, and they're confident in reaching out to me knowing that I'll understand, but you know, also that they have nothing to be ashamed of because I have no idea who they are. And I don't mean any disrespect by that. It's just, you know, this is sort of a one way thing. I make videos, you guys watch them. There's not a lot of reciprocity unless I'm talking to you guys directly, which again, I try to do as often as possible. But I actually think that it's a good dynamic because what I've noticed is that people watch my videos they get the impression that I'm generally a nice guy, I'm aware of what they may be going through, and most importantly, whether or not I know about what they're going through will have virtually zero effect on their life, and so people feel comfortable reaching out to me for advice or help, and so I'm bringing this up to say, if that's you, if you're going through something, if you need someone to talk to, I can't promise that I'll see your message, and I don't claim to be an expert on anything. I've never actually claimed to be smart. Like, you know, sure, I got big brain, but like, that boy is not dense, so... I just wanted to put that out there. At the very least, you could have someone to talk to. I'm more than happy to help if I can, because of course you guys support me by watching my videos. Some of you have signed up for memberships at heckoffcommy.com slash memberships. <laughs> you know, you guys are my favorite because now I can eat more than protein bars and water. Very nice. Um, the only thing I would ask though is if you're gonna tell me about your porn problem, just Try to limit the detail, because now I'm expecting to go to these universities and give speeches and just have guys coming up to me like, John Doyle, I was masturbating some pretty obscure internet porn until I watched your video, man. That helped me a lot. Like, it was intense, bro. Like, have you ever seen Zootopia? I'm just going to be there like, I love you too, man. <laughs> but we'll talk about banning porn now. Here's the thing. I know that sometimes I might come off as something of an extremist on certain issues, which I guess is true depending on the issue, but I still think that we have to be pragmatic. I think that we have to take baby steps. And there's something to be said for the strategy of asking for a mile but anticipating an inch, because if you come out and you say like, hey, I don't want to outright ban porn. What if we met in the middle and we did this? Then your opposition will say, no, but we can do this because you're almost inexorably going to lose some ground during the negotiation process of anything. So when I come out, get a little caffeinated, get a little angry, say that we should just ban pornography, understand that if I set the frame of reference at that extreme, there's a greater chance that the Overton window plays out in my favor. So in other words, I think from a grand strategy perspective, it's more advantageous to ask for more than you intend on being given or even more that you want. So when I say, <laughs> when I say that you and your e -whore was nothing personal, you know that I'm telling the truth. Um, and what I alluded to in the last video is that unlike drugs or alcohol, where you know you have to examine it, you can consciously decide whether or not you use it. When you view pornography, you are already activating the circuits in your brain and your sexual desire is much more powerful than your desire to compulsively smoke or drink. So because of that, it's much harder to make an impartial, informed decision as to whether or not to consume pornography. And once you're an adult, that's one thing. But when you're a child and you're being exposed to this stuff at 11 years old, you're becoming overly sexualized and you're becoming prematurely sexualized. That's in addition to a culture that already sexualizes children in our media, on our TV shows. Yeah, let's let our daughters wear makeup that simulates the appearance of sexual arousal. It's very damaging to children. And clearly our culture has done a poor job at policing this on a micro scale through uh, you know, complete reliance on families to protect and shelter their children. And part of that is because our culture in general doesn't know or doesn't care about the harms of pornography. So, you know, if you'd like to know what I would like to see and what I think could actually be accomplished if we mobilize some people with balls in Washington, I'd like to see a system put in place like they have in the United Kingdom. Last July, they became the first country in the world to introduce age verification for online pornography access. And so as of July 15th, internet providers had, um, had to verify that people viewing internet pornography are at least 18 years old. And so basically the way that that works is websites are partnered with companies that independently verify your age and then they give the website the okay that you can access it and you can verify your age with credit cards, with passports, et cetera. So the biggest objection to this is like, oh, what if people get our data? What if people find out what kind of porn we're watching? I don't know, man. If you're embarrassed like about the kind of porn you're watching, maybe stop watching porn. Maybe try and keep it to like two consenting human beings, one man, one woman. You know, but the data suggests that you won't even be interested in that. 
for that long, you're gonna move on to something weird like Zootopia. But as far as the data goes, you know, companies are secure, they exist to be secure, and obviously there's risk with online data processing, but the risk of prematurely sexualizing children is much greater. We're talking long-term mental health issues, behavioral problems. I mean, literally, the best way to ruin a child's life is to prematurely sexualize them. And another thing to note, this move was led by conservative politicians in the UK, and obviously conservative identity is much different in the UK than in the US, but it's still important to ask yourself, if you're a conservative, what are you aiming to conserve? You might say the values of freedom and liberty, and to that I would say I agree. However, exposing children to graphic sexual content imposes an externality on them that robs them of their freedom and liberty by enslaving them to their own desires. And the same can be true of adults as well, but they're probably better equipped to make an informed decision. But now what we're seeing is everyone is starting to watch porn from such a young age that they can't even do studies on it with control groups because they can't find young people who haven't been exposed to it. And that brings me to the last thing that I wanted to address, which was a supposed contradiction in my argument from the last video. It wasn't a contradiction. It was just a matter of me not articulating myself well enough. So allow me to clarify. Um, I said that on the one hand, they want us addicted to pornography so that they can control us. And on the other hand, I'm okay with giving the government the power to ban pornography. And some people interpreted that as me saying that I wanted the same people that want us addicted to it so that they can control us to have the power to control us. That's not what I meant. I believe that the government benefits when its citizens are pacified and distracted by pornography, yes, but I don't believe that they're the driving force behind it. As I stated, it's the people in our movies, it's the people on our TVs, it's the people in our music, and it's the people who fund all of that. It's the elite class. The elite class benefits when we're distracted, and people on the left like to blame the rich people, they like to blame the one percenters, people on the right like to blame the government, those damn DC bureaucrats. Here's the thing, it's actually both of them. They're working in collusion to make each other richer at your expense. Who do you think is funding the campaigns? Who do you think is signing the checks for $30,000 speaking fees? Who do you think is paying for lobbyists to get corporate welfare benefits so that money is taken out of your paycheck to subsidize the cost of labor for these mega companies? And again, this isn't leftist anti-corporate rhetoric. I'm not against corporations. They're just pieces of paper. I have one. What I'm against and what no one talks about is the collusion that occurs between the government and these mega corporations. The mega corporations use the government to make themselves richer at the expense of your paycheck and of your small business, and then they share the benefits with Washington through campaign donations, speaking fees. Oh, let me buy a thousand copies of your new book and uh, donate it to libraries, stuff like that. And again, they prefer it when we don't know who to point the finger at. They prefer it when the right praises the businesses for cheap products and good quality. It's like, would those products be so cheap if we weren't subsidizing the company with your tax money? Or when the left sees these issues as being issues of capitalism gone wrong, it's the fault of capitalism. It's like, this isn't capitalism. <laughs> this is far from a free market. This is what happens when the free market becomes corrupted by bad actors. This is what happens when the mega corporations and big government realize that they don't actually have to be opposed to each other. They can just work together at the expense of the American citizens. And meanwhile, Let's distract them by pushing pornography, pushing marijuana, alcohol, anything we can to make them apathetic, numb, pacified subjects. So it's two sides of the same coin, but each side still has a certain sensitivity input, I think. So I do actually believe that we could get something like what they did in the UK enacted through our government. It's just a matter of could we mobilize enough people to put that pressure on our government to where just one person introduces the legislation? Because again, I think that this is a very serious issue and I think that it would gain traction quickly if it were just given the proper attention. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Give it a big comment down below. Maybe I'll read them. Maybe it'll give me another brain tumor. Who knows? And then give it a big, of course, subscribe to the channel. Epic fall Midwest tour on the clock. Very excited. Come out. Come tell me about your weird porn in person. It'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Poof.